So answer is yes and no. We must understand that cirrhosis is a field change. It means that the change in the liver or degradation is nearly the same throughout the liver. It's not that some areas are spoiled and some areas are perfectly all right. Right? For example, it's like if you have a tomato and it's rotten. One area of the tomato is rotten, you can chop it and discard and the other area is normal, you can use it. Here it's like the entire tomato is rotting the same amount from inside. Right? Then why did I say yes and no? So yes, because in early stages of cirrhosis, when the liver is still able to meet the body's demands and a person can continue with his liver for say 5-10 years, and he develops a small complication in one part of the liver like it often happens in a tumor then we can chop that portion and take it away so that is the yes part the no part when the entire liver is weak and can't sustain body's requirements for example when there is water in the belly or there is jaundice or there is hepatic encephalopathy then in this situation we need to take out the whole liver and put in a new one So ascites or collection of water in the belly has many causes and the weakness of the liver or cirrhosis is one of them. So when it's not, then the ascites is not due to liver cirrhosis or weakness of the liver, then we treat that cause. That is not by transplant. Now when we are looking at ascites due to liver weakness or cirrhosis, why does it form? It forms because of a pressure gradient. It's a physical uh, phenomena. The liver acts as an impediment to flow of blood. So there is a pressure difference between the flow inside to the liver and the point at which it is exiting. This liver acts like a block. So by decreasing that pressure gradient, by making a tunnel, let's say, between the portal vein at the inflow to the liver and the hepatic vein, which is the outflow to the liver, this is called a TIPS procedure, we can reduce the pressure gradient across the liver and this will reduce the formation of ascites. Now this procedure does not change the overall outlook or the course of liver disease, does not alter the liver function. So the overall survival and outlook, it does not change, but it, what it does is it decreases the formation of ascites. And by doing this, we can get a ascites reduction for some period, we can push transplant for a few months, maybe a year or two, but we won't be able to. Um, avoid a transplant. Okay, so uh, as the liver progresses from before cirrhosis, start of cirrhosis till progression and death, there is a point somewhere just before cirrhosis or in early cirrhosis where if we take care of the cause of cirrhosis, so for example if it's alcohol and the consumption of alcohol is stopped, or it's hepatitis B or C and we give appropriate medicines. There is reversal to some extent of the liver disease and surely the progression is slowed down or halted for some time. But beyond that point, when we've gotten into decompensated cirrhosis, that means we are now having problems from that, ascites or jaundice. In these situations, um, the disease is progressive. Not only can it not be stopped, the current technology does not allow us to completely stop the progression also. We can slow down the progression, but the disease will continue to worsen slowly over a period of time. Now people come and ask me, can I take uh, Ayurvedic or homeopathic, that is alternate systems of medicine or stem cells? My answer to them is I haven't studied those systems, so I don't know. But what do I see is I see patients who have tried this, it hasn't worked and they've come Either it hasn't worked at all and they've spent some time and become weak or the disease has actually gotten worse after trying that out. And as far as stem cells are concerned, it's still under research. It may have a role in very early disease or select patients early in their disease. But once you've reached the decompensated stage, you're starting to have ascites or jaundice. As of now, the current technology that we have does not allow us to repair that without a transplant procedure.
सो वेन यू हैव लिवर कैंसर एंड द रेस्ट ऑफ द लिवर इज नॉर्मल विच हैपन वेरी इन फ्रीक्वेंटली देन यू डोंट नीड अ ट्रांसप्लांट द फर्स्ट अटैम्प्ट इज टू ट्राई एंड रिमूव दैट पोर्शन ऑफ द लिवर विच हैज द कैंसर प्रोवाइडेड द रेस्ट ऑफ द लिवर इज फ्री ऑफ कैंसर बट इफ देर इज लेट्स ए लिवर कैंसर ऑन द सेटिंग ऑफ सीरोसिस विच इज मोस्ट ऑफ एटी फाइव परसेंट नाइन्टी परसेंट ऑफ द टाइम्स then in that situation we are dealing with two diseases the liver cirrhosis per se and the liver cancer there are two threats to your life now the liver cirrhosis can be early stage or can be let's say middle or late stages and in early stage the liver cancer becomes the primary threat to your life right so you can neutralize by neutralizing the cancer you're left with only one threat and that can be neutralized by ablating the tumor with let's say a radio frequency ablation or a microwave ablation or surgically cut that portion and take away so you're left with only the liver that is damaged to deal with now in this situation the damaged liver uh, is a pro cancerous state or a pre malignant state so many about half of the patients will have a recurrence or will have a new tumor develop in the coming 2 or 3 years but the second part of the story is if the liver um, cirrhosis per se is in the middle or late stages then sometimes this is a bigger threat to life than this before the tumor can spread and kill you is the liver disease which will kill you in that situation transplant is the only way out now so can you avoid transplant in the setting of liver tumor and cirrhosis so in the early stages by ablating the tumor you may be able to postpone it and keep a watch for recurrence there will come a stage where even if there is no recurrence the liver will become weak enough and that you will need a transplant so in short you can maybe push transplant for a while but it's highly unlikely that in the setting of cirrhosis and hcc you're going to be able to completely avoid a transplant so alcohol affects the liver in a couple of ways but broadly um, it causes inflammation and steatohepatitis and which gradually progresses into uh, scarring and fibrosis and cirrhosis so if it's in the early stages sometimes there is an acute rise in inflammation and you can have the same or similar presentation like in cirrhosis they'll get jaundice they may get some water in the belly so in these situations if we can decrease the inflammation before the irreversible stage of the disease the primary treatment is to stop alcohol and some supportive medicines that is with medications so stop alcohol and medicines and stay off alcohol the liver may recover completely and if it does then you can say that the transplant can be avoided so this person shouldn't go back to alcohol once it is reached an irreversible stage and gone into cirrhosis Uh, at that point even if you stop drinking uh, the progression of disease becomes slow but it's still progressive and once you've gotten into the non recoverable phase then there is no way to avoid a transplant so fatty liver has become very prevalent in the uh, in india and as well as in the world fatty liver actually means that there's accumulation of fat within the cells of the liver uh, it's it's it shouldn't be there but because uh, of some reason and usually the reason is we are overweight and we have fat in all the wrong places so it's within the liver cells as well in most of them it will not progress to inflammation scarring and end stage liver disease So if we have fatty liver it's like a warning for us that we've got extra fat all over the body and we need to reverse it with whatever we have today so we don't have specific medicines or a magic wand to take and the fatty liver will get reversed but often it's lifestyle modification it's correction of other problems that can contribute uh, to liver damage like correction of diabetes or correction of cholesterol if there's associated hepatitis b or hepatitis c so fatty liver is like a wake up warning call mm, very a minority maybe 10 12% will progress into fibrosis cirrhosis and it's only in end stage cirrhosis that we would need uh, a liver transplant so can we avoid a transplant in fatty liver i think by all means if we can avoid progression to cirrhosis 
then we can use that as a very good uh, warning sign take it seriously and decrease uh, the fat content in the body and in the liver so i presume that there is cirrhosis and uh, you are in a follow up with the hepatologist for the treatment of cirrhosis per se cirrhosis is a progressive disease so despite the best medication and the uh, whatever science we have we can't as of now stop the progression of disease it's going to progress so somewhere along the line you will need a transplant that is what is going to be therapeutic or cure you so if i try and draw a graph of time and the risk of the transplant right a normal standard transplant should have today a 5% risk at best 5 to 7% or 10% risk not more than that so if i draw a graph of risk on the y axis and time so initially you can wait a long time and the risk will not increase but there comes a time on the disease when the graph will go like this that means little time you wait the risk jumps up from here little more you wait the risk has gone up from here to here that much right the risk is like this so ideally you want to be doing the transplant before the risk starts to jump up right? so this is theory question is how do you identify this uh, stage in uh, in your patient Uh, typically you won't be able to do it it's your doctor who needs to be able to tell you that so you want to meet the transplant surgeon a few months before this this point where you know it's ideal the risk is the lowest yet you waited long enough and done all the treatments without surgery uh, you've tried all the things up so you want to meet the doctor before so that you you have understood the team you developed a rapport with the transplant surgeon uh, you kind of heard one perspective when you would need surgery the the hepatologist is trying to tell you how we can you know continue treatment with medication so that you can hear both sides of the story and uh, as a surgeon i would say the first time you have a liver related decompensation which really means the first time you develop ascites or water in your belly the first time you develop hepatic encephalopathy the first time you have jaundice and you know the bilirubin despite medication is not coming back to its normal over the next 3 or 4 weeks that's the time i would say uh, you should meet a surgeon um, and so that you can understand the process of transplant it doesn't have to happen right away but then you can time the transplant so that the risk of surgery is minimal and you waited as long as you could wait